Hey folks, it's JP. I'm in Lockport, Louisiana. Uh, Shawi and I removed bees on this particular barn behind me. Uh, I want to say two years ago, they were way up in the eaves on both ends of the building. Well, today they're in a wall section. We have board and batten construction, and I'm about to get started. It's 5:30 in the evening. We got a little bit of a late start because we had some uh, rain showers ahead of Dodge. So uh, I'm about to get into it. I'm going to open up the wall, expose our hive. I may or may not use the bee vacuum to get our numbers down. We'll do our transfers of our comb sections and our frames like we normally do and try to get the hive situated before dark in a setup. Hope you all enjoy the video. Tell you what, I sure had to go through a lot to get to where the bees are. Let me show you what I had to take off. You see that board right there? Look at all this over here. Look at all these boards and trim. All this to get to that spot. Just you know the way this is constructed. So, all right, now we can finally uh, start removing this thing. I hope I'm wrong, but in looking at this thing and how it's uh, the building's constructed. I think there's a chance that we're just looking at the bottom of the hive. I have a suspicion that it goes up higher than this. We right, I'm looking right at the brood nest, and I don't see any honey. And I think they've been here a little longer than uh, what was originally uh, perceived. So uh, right now I'm gonna take a quick little break and regroup and take a look at this and see how much further we want to go with this today. But uh, I got a feeling we're gonna probably gonna have to continue upward. I've seen a little bit of everything, folks, so is this unusual? No, not at all. It's, it's what they do. <laughs> So this is the deal, okay? The hive uh, goes upwards and remove this section right here. We gotta have to pull a bunch of ring shank nails. You know that could take anywhere from 25 to you know 30 minutes to open that up, and then we gotta deal with whatever's in there. We got rain coming, so I just decided to uh, go ahead and put a couple of boards back in place, and I'll be back tomorrow to get back into this job. All right, folks. It's day two. I'm back in uh, Lockport, and uh, we'll go ahead and get it on out of there and get it done today, and then uh, place the hive on the truck at, at dark.
show you our queen. Okay. All right. All right. So what I did is, uh, we know that the main hive was uh, where that, that largest comb section is. Smoked the heck out of the combs above and just ran any bees that were, you know, wanting to go up and wanting to cluster up down in that middle section. And uh, you see those bottom combs right there that are hanging down? That's a solid 2 by 4 that goes all the way over to the wall where the felt paper is. So the bees really, once they ran down, they had no choice but to you know, stop where that 2 by 4 is or maybe to try to go over it. And uh, inevitably, uh, my plan you know, was to run them down and see if she couldn't run down with them and maybe I could spot her. And uh, I've had success doing that same thing before and uh, it worked this time. So I'm always happy to get the queen. So we can kind of take our time a little bit. Actually, we can even go a little faster if we want because we got her. And I'm going to go ahead and put her in the setup. We'll vacuum some bees and we'll transfer what usable comb is left and we'll get them situated and I'll probably be able to kick back a little bit. Although I might even go off and get some seafood and then come back at dark and I'll box them up. So there she is. Right there, folks. <laughs> Last night <clears throat> I shook uh, all the bees out of the catch box, the vacuum box. And uh, into that nuke over there. So that nuke, uh, as far as I can tell, has got a good bit of bees. And what I'll inevitably wind up doing is uh, I'll combine what's in the nuke into this deep. We're gonna put them, put them all in this, in this deep right here. The reason I, I like to cage them is you move the setup to your yard, and um, for some reason the bees decide you know they don't want to be in the setup, and they swarm out. Well, <clears throat> they have to come back because they're queening. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave her cage for two to three days and uh, let them establish a foundation in the new setup. And once they anchor themselves, then I'll go ahead and release her. And that way I minimize abscons. And I've done it like this over the years and uh, it works great. Okay, If you transfer them and you don't cage that queen, uh, your abscons are going to you know, going to go way up. So, it makes a lot of sense and uh, it works for me. Well, I've been kicked by the wind, robbed by the sleet, had my head stoved in, but I'm still on my feet and I'm still really Smuggled some smokes and folks from Mexico. Baked by the sun every time I go to Mexico And I'm still And I've been from Tucson to Tucumcari To had you be a donor bar We've driven every kind of rig that's ever been made Driven the back road so I wouldn't get way Combine the nuke with the, the deep and um, with the catch box, the bees will vacuum on top of the brew box. We're going to set this on top of the ladder and uh, get those bees uh, gravitating to the setup. That's what I removed yesterday. See, bees are covering it. with this 
this unit because it does have a screen top what I'll do is I'll bring it to the yard and I'll, I'll put a top cover over it. If you set it up and don't put the top cover on, come daylight, the bees are going to want to try to be all up in the top here because of, of the light factor. So uh, when you set it up in your yard, um, go ahead and put a top cover on it. And um, in the morning, they should all be down in the brood box. As you can see okay. I got all our comb out. All right. I scraped the surfaces down really well. They had a little bit of honey on that 2 by 4 right here. And uh, I just let let the bees clean it up. Okay? So uh, they'll regurgitate that back into the hive and make comb with it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to use a repellent to spray our surfaces down to get the bees okay, off of the wall and force them to gravitate onto our setup. All right. I normally, you know, normally do this. I'll set the ladder up with the catch box, you know, within maybe five feet or so of where the hive was. If you have the hive too close to the wall with the repellent, naturally the bees might get a little confused. You know, you're defeating the purpose. So, so move the the setup that way. They're they're forced off the wall, but they'll gravitate over to your setup, which is, you know, four or five feet away. If you got a little wind, uh, you know, put it uh, upwind. So that the repellent's blowing away from your hive, okay? Good little tip to remember right there. Right now I have no wind. y'all enjoyed this video uh, we got it done before dark so bees are gravitating to our setup we got our, our all our brood in our hive box we have the queen cage so it's all gonna work out like it always does it just so happened that it took two days on this one because I got a late start yesterday evening and we had rain that, that came in and then the curveball was that this wall just keeps going up okay I hope y'all enjoyed it another one from JP the B man and y'all have a good day because I sure am <laughs>